Welcome to NSA eNugget series. My name is Loy Wei Ping, and it's a great pleasure for me to be with you today for today's session, Fun with the Japanese Language. Okay, before we begin, uh, I would like everyone to participate in this poll question. Have you been to Japan before? Right, you can simply uh, select yes or no and submit your answer in the Facebook poll now. And we will be sharing the results with you in a very short while. Okay, for me, as to this question, have you been to Japan before? Uh, yes, I have. I have been there many times. And uh, I've been there for business as well as for holidays. Um, I've also stayed in Japan for about two years in my previous job. So uh, it is a very nice country and I love Japan very much. And uh, uh, that's why I'm uh, teaching the Japanese language. And um, my favorite city in uh, Japan is uh, Matsumoto. I, I'm not sure whether you have heard of Matsumoto before. It is a city in this province called Nagano. And uh, Nagano has a lot of mountains and usually people go there for skiing. Okay, personally, I like the nature over there. And um, I have also stayed in uh, Tokyo and uh, Kanagawa before. All right. Um, also, I believe a lot of... Ah, yes, the results just came in. And uh, the majority of you have been to Japan. Okay, so that's great. So uh, let's move on to uh, today's topic. Okay. So for today's session, I will be covering uh, four different uh, topics. The first one is introduction to Japan, then followed by Japanese culture, Japanese writing system, and then the last one, basic Japanese expressions that uh, everyone may have heard of them before, but uh, may not know exactly the meaning. So I will be sharing with you in a short while. Okay, first, let's go on to Introduction to Japan. So first of all, let's take a look at this map. Uh, can you find where is Japan? Okay, it's over here. That's right. And how about Singapore? Okay, Singapore is right here. Yes. So if you take a flight from Singapore to Japan, it takes about seven hours. So it's just nice and not too long. And uh, as you can see from this map, um, Japan is located very near to China and Korea. So because of its uh, location, uh, since ancient times, it already has a strong cultural influences from China. And also because of its geographical location, Japan has a lot of earthquakes. And as a result, it also has a lot of hot springs which are enjoyed by uh, both locals and uh, tourists. Okay, so next, let's look at uh, the different parts of Japan. So Japan is actually consists of four main islands. So if we start from the north, we have Hokkaido. Okay, Hokkaido. And uh, the next island is a, the biggest island in Japan. Uh, we have Honshu, okay, Honshu. So Honshu is also where Tokyo is located. Okay, Tokyo is located. Tokyo, the capital of Japan is located in Honshu. And next we have the smallest island called Shikoku. Shikoku. And the last island we have Kyushu. Kyushu, okay. So there we are, we have four main islands. And how about next one, the major cities of Japan. Okay, major cities of Japan. Can you find any names that you are familiar with? Yes. Okay, let's start from the top. Okay, the top major city at the top is uh, we have Sapporo. Okay, Sapporo is in Hokkaido. Then after that, we have Sendai, followed by Tokyo. Tokyo, as I said earlier on, is the capital of Japan. And very near to Tokyo, we have Yokohama. Okay, let's go up a little bit. We have Nagoya. After that, we have Kyoto, Osaka, Kobe, 
followed by Hiroshima and Fukuoka, right? So since Singaporeans like to travel so much to Japan, um, we have uh, almost direct flights to almost all the major cities that you see here on the map, probably except for Kyoto and Sendai, all right? So you can actually fly direct to any of the major cities if you are going there for holidays or business. Okay, next, let's look at some aspects of the Japanese culture. Okay, the first aspect is sushi. So if you look at the picture over here, we have different types of sushi. So have you tried all of them before? Okay, now we actually have a lot of uh, sushi restaurants in Singapore. So these uh, different types of sushi uh, may be uh, very common and you may be very familiar with them. But do you know that sushi actually originates as a means to preserve fish by fermenting it with boiled rice? And uh, this practice is uh, done by uh, people who live in the mountains in the Southeast Asia. Okay, so this is not actually a Japanese practice, but it was brought over to Japan from China during the Nara period. All right, so if we look at the word origin of sushi, okay, sushi comes from two words. Okay, the first word, su, meaning vinegar. Right, so when we want to preserve something, we usually use vinegar to preserve it. So that's why we have vinegar in the rice. And then the second important component is meshi. Okay, meshi. Okay, meshi meaning rice. So when we combine the two words together, su and meshi becomes sushi. Okay, so whenever you say you are eating sushi, you must have vinegar rice together with your fish on top okay so that's the origin of the word okay the next aspect of japanese culture that i would like to share with you is kimono so as you can see in the picture this young lady is wearing a traditional japanese clothing called the kimono but uh, kimono originally comes from traditional chinese clothing introduced by japanese and uh, uh, introduced to japan by Jap uh, Chinese and boys in the Kofun period. Okay, but nowadays uh, people only wear kimono during formal occasions, such as weddings or funerals, or during the Japanese uh, New Year. So kimono, the word origin is like this. It comes from two words. The first word ki means to wear, and mono means the thing. So together, kimono means the thing that you wear, right? So a fun fact about kimono is that it doesn't have any zips, hooks, or buttons on it. So how do you wear them? Okay, so first you wear the clothes and then after that, you tie it uh, with a, a lot of uh, different uh, strings and uh, belts and so on. So because the process is very tedious, usually people don't know how to wear themselves. So usually they will engage a kimono dresser to come to the house and help you wear the clothes itself. All right. So you can actually go to schools to learn how to wear the kimono. So that's why nowadays people only wear it during special occasions. All right. Then uh, a, more simpler, uh, a more simple version of kimono is what we call the yukata. Okay. As you can see in the picture here over here, we have a yukata for the ladies and for the guys. Okay. So yukata for the ladies is usually um, brightly colored and has uh, usually floral designs, whereas the yukata for the males will be of a simple one color and usually in dark colors. Okay, yukata is actually a casual kimono worn during the summer okay, because the fabric is very thin. That's why it's suitable for wearing during the summer. And uh, if you go to the traditional Japanese inn, and you can usually see uh, the hotels or the inns will offer you this uh, yukata to wear after you have uh, gone to the hot springs. So as you can see from the Chinese words over here, 
Yukata actually means uh, bathing clothes because people usually wear it after they have gotten out of the hot springs or the baths. Okay, so Yukata is uh, quite easy to wear. You can wear it by yourselves. And uh, people usually wear it uh, when they go to see uh, cherry blossoms okay, during the springtime. Okay, next, let's move on to uh, Japanese writing system. Okay, now the Japanese has three writing systems. Okay, so the three writing systems are, the first one is kanji, followed by hiragana. The next one is katakana. Okay, so Japanese use all three of them when they write. Okay, let's talk about the first one, kanji. Okay, so Japanese language is actually a spoken language. They do not have the written language. So what happens is during the 4th or the 5th century, um, their envoys went to China and they introduced it to Japan. So the Japanese people took the kanji symbol and uh, they match it to the same word in their own language. All right. So as a result, most kanji can be read in two ways. Okay, either the Chinese way, okay, meaning the original sound is from China, and this is what we call the onyomi, and the Japanese way, they pronounce it as kunyomi. So let's take the example of this Chinese character, which we call shan in Chinese. All right, so in Japan, the Chinese way of pronouncing this word is san. The Japanese way is pronounced as yama. Okay, so this same Chinese character can be pronounced as san or yama. And if we are referring to Mount Fuji, we pronounce it as Fujisan. Okay, Fujisan. All right? So this is kanji. Okay, the next writing system that we have is hiragana. So I have this number over here. 46. So this 46 means that there are altogether 46 basic hiraganas that people usually learn. All right, so let's look at the first five hiraganas. So first five hiraganas are what we call the vowel sounds, All right? Vowel sounds. So how do I pronounce the vowel sounds? Okay, so let's try, uh, let's try this together, all right? So the first five vowel sounds are A, E, U, E, O. Okay, let's try again one more time. A, E, U, E, O. Okay, so the five vowel sounds, we can combine it with the consonant sounds on the left side. Okay, the consonant sounds. So, um, so for today, I will just go through the consonant sounds on the left side. So if I combine it with the K sound, I will have ka. If I combine it with the S sound, I will have sa. Okay, let's go down the column. Next, we have ta, na, ha, ma, ya, la, Wa. And the last one, what do you think? How do we pronounce this? Okay, the last sound, the N sound, we pronounce it as N. Mm. Okay, can we try again? The last one is N. Mm. All right, so we have the 46 basic hiraganas. Okay, now before I forget, uh, you may like to take a picture of the hiragana chart so that we can refer to it later on when we come to the basic Japanese expressions. Okay, so you can take a picture of this. Right, after hiragana, next we come to katakana. Okay, now uh, some of you may be feeling, did I see this before? Okay, now you can notice that katakana also has 46 of them. Uh, the pronunciation is exactly the same as the hiragana, but the characters are written differently. All right, so the first five uh, sounds are exactly the same. Okay, the first five vowel sounds, do you remember how to pronounce it? The okay, first five vowel sounds again, katakana, we still pronounce it as a, 
E, U, E, and O. Okay, however, they are written differently. Okay, now why is that so? I will come to that in a short while. Okay, first, let's go back to hiragana again. Now, remember that I said um, the Japanese borrowed kanji from China during the 4th and 5th century. Okay, so this is what it originally looks like. All right, so when the Japanese uh, imported kanji from China, they used these Chinese characters to denote the hiragana sounds. So if you look at the first Chinese characters on top in black color, okay, these are the original Chinese characters. Then after that, the red color ones are what we call the cursive script of the Chinese calligraphy. Okay, so when you write Chinese calligraphy and you write it in a cursive way, in Chinese, we call it Cao Shu. In Japanese pronunciation, we call it So Shō. right? So this is the cursive script. So after over time, the cursive script becomes the simplified version, which is the bottom part, the bottom one. We called it the Hiragana, all right? So originally, Japanese people used to write in kanji. So if you look at their historical documents, they are all written in kanji, and, uh, but they are pronounced in the Japanese way. So the educated people or the men prefer to write in kanji. However, as you know, Chinese characters or kanjis have a lot of strokes. So it's very difficult to remember how to write every one of them. So over time, these words become simplified and they are first used by the women for personal communication and literature, as in their letters and uh, stories, right? So over time, they become the hiragana that you see over here, right? So since kanji is taken from China and the way they write is similar to Chinese, okay, the original words derived from Chinese, how about the pronunciation? Do they sound like Chinese as well? Okay, now this is a fun fact. Most of the hiragana pronunciations are similar to Hokkien. Oh, I bet you didn't know that, right? Okay, now let's look at and three examples over here, all right? So first, let's look at this word in the middle. I hope you still have your picture of the hiragana that you have taken earlier on. Do you know how to pronounce the original Chinese character? Okay, yes, the Chinese character is pronounced as nu, all right? The Han Yu Pinyin is nu, all right? So can you guess how do I pronounce this word in hiragana, for hiragana? Okay, the hiragana pronunciation is nu, nu, okay? Nu as well. Okay, let's look at the second example. Second example, how do I pronounce this word? in Hokkien, okay, Hokkien. Uh, my Hokkien is not very good, but I will try my best. Okay, Hokkien, this word is mo, correct? Mo, so it's M-O, right? So how do I pronounce it in Japanese? If you look at your chart again, Japanese pronunciation is mo. Okay, so that's our second example. Third example, let's pronounce this word in Hokkien again. How do I pronounce it Hokkien? Okay, Hokkien speakers, please help. How do I pronounce this? Okay, Hokkien pronunciation I try is gu, right? So it's G-U, right? Gu. Okay, Japanese pronunciation is ku, K-U, ku. Okay, so we have three examples that show us that uh, most of the pronunciations are similar to Hokkien. And why is that so? Okay, because Hokkien originated in, uh, as the old Chinese during the third century, okay, old Chinese. And uh, when kanji was imported to Japan during the fifth or sixth century, it was actually a mixture of old Chinese and middle Chinese. So the origin of these Chinese are like Hokkien. So that's why the Hokkien sound is also brought over to Japan as well. So you can have fun trying to pronounce all these in Hokkien and you can try and match and see whether they are similar to the uh, hiragana pronunciation, all right? So you can have fun with this later on. Okay, now let's look at katakana. 
How about katakana? So katakana, similarly, Japanese people use another set of Chinese characters to denote the katakana, but this is developed in the 9th century by Buddhist monks by taking part of the kanji character as a form of shorthand. So as you can see, the, diff the words that are highlighted in red color is the part that is uh, taken to denote the katakana. So over time, katakana is used to transcribe foreign language words and borrowed words into Japanese. All right. So let's look at the summary of the three writing systems. We have kanji, right? So when do we use kanji? Okay, it is used for words that originate from China. So you can pronounce it in the Chinese way or the Japanese way, all right? Then hiragana, when do I use hiragana? Okay, I use it for words that originate from Japan, the native words, all right? Then lastly, how about katakana? I use it for words that originate from other countries, okay? So other countries, all right? So having said that, now let's look at some uh, simple expressions and words that make use of the three different types of writing system. Okay, basic expressions. Now, you can see that the words have both kanji and hiragana, as well as the English pronunciations, which is the Romanized pronunciation. Okay, Romanized pronunciation. The first word, how do I pronounce this? Okay. We pronounce it as se kai, so it's three sounds. Se kai, we say together, it becomes se kai. Se kai. Okay. Now you may think that oh, this sounds like uh, some word that I know in Hokkien. Okay, you are right. Okay, se kai. It means the world. How about the second word? Shi n bu n. Okay, it has four sounds. Shi n bu n. If I say it quickly, it becomes shimbun, shimbun. Okay, so when you write shimbun, you can write it in the Chinese character or you can write it in the hiragana that you see on top. Okay, shimbun, newspaper. Okay. Next, how do I pronounce this? Can you try it before I say the word? Okay, look at the English pronunciation. Okay, that's right. It's called Mi lai, mi lai, okay, future. Okay, next, let's look at coffee. How do I pronounce coffee? Coffee is the same, it's ko hi, ko hi. All right, so ko hi is an English word, right? So English word, Japanese people use katakana to write it, okay? So in Singapore, you may go to the hawker center and says, uh, and tell the person, oh, I want my kopi. But in Japan, you cannot say kopi. You have to say kohi. All right, kohi. Okay, next. Okay, next we have sushi. Sushi, all right? So sushi, you can write it in hiragana or you can write it in kanji. The next word, ocha. Ocha. Japanese people enjoy their green tea, and green tea is very uh, helpful for your health. It's very good for your health. Okay, we can drink it every day. Okay, next word. Okay, we have banana. Okay, now in English we pronounce this as banana, right? But you cannot say banana in Japanese. You have to say banana. Okay, banana. Okay. Now, the next word, this is an interesting word. How do I pronounce this long word that means French fries? Okay, this word is called furaido potato. Furaido potato. So if you go to Japan and you want to order French fries, you cannot say French fries because they won't understand you. You have to say furaido potato. Okay, so if I want to order fried potato, uh, not fried potatoes actually, French fries, I have to say Fried potato, kudasai. Okay, fried potato, kudasai. Okay. Next. Now, this is interesting. 
how do I pronounce Singapore in the Japanese way using katakana? Okay, Singapore is Singapore. Singapore. Okay, so Singapore. We the Japanese people write it in katakana. Okay, how about the word that means person? There are two pronunciations for person. The first pronunciation, hito, hito. Second pronunciation, jin, jin. Now, can you tell me which one is Chinese way of pronouncing? Which way? Which one is the Japanese way of pronouncing? Okay, you are right. Jin is the Chinese way of pronouncing. Hito is the Japanese way of pronouncing. So if I want to say I am a Singaporean, which one should I say? Or how do I say the whole thing? So Singapore is Singapore. Person is, okay, we use this one. Okay, we use this pronunciation. So if we want to say I am a Singaporean, you can say Singapore Jin. Singapore Jin. Okay, I am a Singaporean. Watashi wa Singapore jin desu. Watashi wa Singapore jin desu. Okay, that's the whole phrase, right? So, but if you say Singapore jin, they will understand you as well. Okay. Next. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Okay. Konnichiwa means hello or good afternoon. So now it's in the afternoon. So when I start this session just now, I said konnichiwa. So you can say konnichiwa to me as well. All right. So usually when people say konnichiwa, then they will do it with a slight bow. And uh, the next word, if you had a very delicious lunch, you can say oishi. Oishi. All right. So oishi. So oishi. Oishi desu ne. Your lunch is delicious, right? Okay. Next, if I want to say thank you, I can say arigato. Arigato. Okay. Arigato has actually five sounds. So it's, if we break it up, it's arigato. -u. Okay. Arigato. -u. But when you say it quickly, it becomes Arigato. Okay. So, arigato, when you say this, you can do a slight bow as well. Next one, sumimasen. Okay, five syllable. Sumimasen. Say quickly, it becomes sumimasen. Sumimasen. Okay, sumimasen means sorry. So, in case you have a situation where you have to say sorry to someone, you can use sumimasen. Okay, there is another meaning of sumimasen, which is when you want to, when you are in a restaurant and you want to call the person's attention, like for example, you want to call the waiter's attention to ask him to come over here, you can say sumimasen. Okay, then the person will come over and attend to you. So in this case, it also means excuse me. Excuse me. Okay, so are you that uh, are you fine with everything over here? Can you remember how to say thank you? Arigato, okay, and sumimasen, okay. Hi. So that is all for my session today. Arigato gozaimashita. Hi. So if you have any questions, uh, you can write on the Facebook comments here and I will try my best to answer them. Okay, right, we have our first question. When is the best time to travel to Japan? Okay, the best time to travel to Japan uh, actually depends on individual. Um, most people like to travel to Japan during in uh, April, okay, during uh, late March to early April. This is where you have the sakura in bloom. Sakura is the cherry blossoms, right? So before you go, you have to check the weather forecast and uh, especially in during on their uh, tourism website to see when the flowers will be in bloom 
and then um, but usually is in late March to early April. And another period where you can go to Japan for your holidays is during the autumn period in uh, around November. Okay, so in autumn, we have the beautiful autumn leaves, okay, especially in Kyoto. People usually go to Kyoto for the autumn season. And you can go to this famous temple called the Kiyomizudera, Kiyomizudera, and uh, you can see a lovely scenery over there. All right. So any other questions coming in? Uh, for me, the best time to travel to Japan, um, I like going there during the springtime as well, during the April, because flowers, the cherry blossoms are very beautiful. And uh, it's a great time to spend with your families and friends sitting under the uh, cherry blossom trees and so on. Right. Okay. The next question we have, question two, how to differentiate Japanese and Korean words? Okay. Uh, how to differentiate? Mm, I'm not so sure uh, what you mean by your question. All right. Uh, if you are saying uh, what is the difference between Japanese and Korean words, uh, in terms of grammar, they are very similar. Okay. Why do I say that? Um, because... Um, in, uh, they have Japanese and Korean have similar uh, grammar patterns. All right. So I take one example. Uh, in English, we say, I love you, right? So I love you. The love is a verb and the verb comes in the middle, all right? But in Japanese and Korean, the verb is at the end of the sentence. Okay. In Japanese, if I want to say, I love you, it becomes I, you, and love. Okay, so love is a verb and it comes at the end. Korean is also the same. And uh, if I'm not wrong, certain Korean words, vocabulary, are very similar to Japanese. The, the, the sound is similar. Okay, the two Korean words that I know have similar pronunciations to Japanese. One word is kaban. Okay, kaban is bag. And kazoku. Kazoku is family. So these two words are exactly the same as Korean. Other words, other Korean words, I'm sorry, I'm not, I am not sure because I, I'm only familiar with Japanese. All right. Okay. Let's look at the next question. For arigato, li is pronounced as li. Yes, you are right. And you have very good listening ears. Okay. Now, when we write in English, we spell arigato as A R I. G-A-T-O-U, right? Okay, so in English, we spell the spelling with the R-I, but when we pronounce, we don't pronounce R sound because Japanese sound does not have the R sound. So R sounds are more like the L sound instead. Okay, so we pronounce it as arigato, arigato. Let me give you another example. If you go to a restaurant and you want to order ramen, R-A-M-E-N, okay? So Japanese don't pronounce it like R-A. So they pronounce it as L-A instead. So you want to order ramen, so you have to say ramen, ramen o kudasai, right? So that is a R sound is more like the L sound instead. Okay, thank you. And uh, let's look at the next question. Any good marathon run available in Japan? Uh, okay, you must be uh, very good in uh, uh, marathons, I guess. Yes, I think there is, a very, there is a good marathon in Japan, but I'm not very sure when is it held. I heard of the Okinawa, Okinawa once, and then there is a one at uh, Hakone, Hakone. But I am not exactly sure when is it. Maybe you can search it up on the internet. Okay, the ones that I know is the Hakone, and then the, another one is at the Okinawa. So you can search for these two keywords. Okay, question number five. How is the transportation in Japan? Is it well connected by rail or road? Okay, transportation in Japan, uh, I would say they are rail. Railway uh, network is very good. 
you don't have to drive when you uh, travel to Japan. You can literally travel uh, using their entire railway networks. Okay, it's very well connected. And uh, for tourists, you can either purchase the JR Pass uh, if you are going to major cities. Okay, so you can buy the JR Pass. We can actually buy it in Singapore. Uh, and, and bring it over to Japan and then they will activate the card before you start using. Or you can, uh, if you are not traveling to major cities, you are going to smaller cities, you can just buy, sometimes they have the like a one day pass or two day pass, that kind of thing. So you can buy those passes where you have uh, unlimited rights in a particular city and uh, it's quite convenient and uh, affordable as well. All right. Okay. Next question, how long does it normally take to master writing the hiragana? Okay, master writing the hiragana, uh, it depends on individual. Okay, um, if, you are, if you have the time and you practice every day, okay, literally you practice every day, uh, you can usually master it within one month. Yes, one month. It's quite possible, yeah provided you have to practice. So like, uh, for example, you have an exercise book and then you have to write the word like maybe five times or 10 times, okay? But if you are not doing it the old school way, uh, you want to do it uh, in the modern way, there are many apps available, okay? You can uh, try and search on your, uh, on your handphone and, and try to download the apps, it will, ask you to practice writing the strokes. And uh, if you do it, uh, I think one month should be enough to master. If you need some more time, uh, probably about three months, you should be able to master all the hiraganas. Okay. Uh, question seven. They say it's easy to find back our lost items in Japan. Is it true no one will pick it? Uh, well, this, I am not very sure. Okay, uh, in all my travels to Japan, I can say the Japan is a very safe city to travel, all right? And uh, I usually, people, even ladies can walk around the streets at night. But again, this is not your own country. So you don't know whether, uh, even though the city is safe, we still need to exercise caution whenever we are traveling to a different place. So for me, I would say uh, it's, it's quite a nice, it's quite a safe place, but I have not experienced uh, losing anything yet. So I, I cannot really comment uh, on this. Uh, probably no one will pick it up. Yes, and if your belongings is really lost, you can uh, go to the nearest police post to find your belonging, yes. Okay, now uh, can we have the last question? Is there a last question? Oh, okay, we have one more question coming in and uh, what are the must eat Japanese food? Okay, must eat Japanese food. All right, so uh, if you are going to Japan for holidays, uh, I would recommend you to try the different sushi and the sashimi, okay? Because um, this is the original uh, place. This is the place where the original sushi and the sashimis are. So if you are going there, I would suggest going to the local markets to try the uh, sashimi. If you are going to Hokkaido, you can try the seafood there. And uh, if you are going to Tokyo, you can try the, uh, the one at uh, this place called, uh, I suddenly cannot remember the name, but the very famous uh, fish market uh, in, uh, in Tokyo. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think we can have one last question. Okay. Um, besides going to big cities like Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto, which of the beat track do you recommend to go in Japan? Thank you. Okay, uh, yes, big cities, oh, Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto, we are, uh, these are the common places that people go to. Uh, off the beat track, uh, I would recommend um, Matsumoto. As I mentioned, Matsumoto is my favorite city in Japan. It's uh, located in Nagoya, uh, sorry, it's located in Nagano, Nagano Prefecture. 
okay, Nagano Prefecture. So if you do a search Nagano and you can see uh, the mountains is in the mountainous region. And uh, there is this very nice place called Hakuba. Hakuba, H-A-K-U-B-A. So uh, you can go uh, hiking and you can also go skiing when it's during the winter. So uh, this is the place that I like and it's off the beat because you can't, you have to go to Tokyo. Then after that, you have to travel by train. So it's not really accessible, but still can go because it's a nice experience traveling there. Okay, so I think that's our last question. So, okay, so... Uh, the Singapore Poly Pace Academy offers a survival Japanese course. And uh, in this course, we'll be talking more about the Japanese culture and also more about the Japanese uh, characters. Some of the topics that we will be covering are self-introduction, shopping, uh, time and days, transport, and so on. So through this course, uh, we'll be learning different expressions on how to talk about different, uh, like for example, the expressions you use during shopping, what are the words you say, and then how to say the time and the days and the transport and so on. And uh, if you would like to find out more about this course and other Japanese courses as well, you can contact uh, Bernard Chong at the following phone number and his website, the website or his email or you can visit the PACE website to find out more about our other courses, okay? Right. Uh, okay, so uh, if you do not have any other questions, right, and uh, I think, uh, okay. So I think that is the end of our e-nugget series. So if you find our talk useful, uh, please do like and share this video with your friends and families to help them pick up some useful tips at their own pace and convenience. So one more time, once again, to learn more about the Survival Japanese course and other courses by Pace Academy, uh, please contact Bernard Chong and or you can call uh, NSA to explore more learning opportunities for the seniors age 50 and above. All right. So thank you very much. Domo, arigatou gozaimashita. Sayonara.